nature has always been a great source of knowledge for humanity. Throughout her history, it has led us toward important realizations. Indeed, each one of us have some sort of a relationship with Mother Nature. And what that means to you may differ from another. But personally, I find myself seeking sanctuary for many things. For pleasure, for serenity, inspiration, even guidance. I feel deeply connected and this had a major impact in defining my identity. A lover of nature, a green thumb hobbyist, a flower power ranger, and somewhat of a moderate green activist. These are just some of the fitting names, but above all, I'm a visual artist who's passionate about exploring the beauty of this world through botanical arts. Everywhere, I see opportunities to find interesting species to create with, and using them in captivating ways are thrills that I seek out constantly. As an artist who mainly works with perishable materials, decomposition is always anticipated. In fact, most of my work comes with an expiration date, which leads to an obvious conclusion. Some find this difficult to accept, however, hence these frequently asked questions. Don't you feel sad seeing your work wither away? And why do you put so much time and effort into making something that is temporary? Also, have you tried using preserved flowers instead? How about pouring box resin over your creation? The desire to preserve what is precious is something that we all have in common. And as creatives, we devote so much into honing our skills and realizing our ideas that naturally the things that we create become a part of us. So who wouldn't want their work kept and appreciated by others forever? But if there's one lesson that life teaches us continuously, is that there's always other points of view. So perhaps there are ways to grant permanence without having to outdo the time. And maybe coming to accept things as they are, that some things are not meant to last for eternity. Changing our perspective can be challenging but can bring forth new insight and perhaps lead to new realizations. As the French novelist Marcel Proulx once wrote, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So here are the stories of dragonflies, potatoes, and roses. It's about how they led me to nature, which eventually became my primary source of inspiration for all facets of my life. Every summer when I was little, I will visit this small town called Kure, a place known for its location, surrounded by inland seas and mountains. And right there in between is where my grandparents lived. My grandmother was an avid supporter of my creative hobbies. She loved when I drew something for her and we used to make origami sculptures by folding papers into different shapes. Still, one of my favorite activities that we did together was hunting cicadas, beetles, and other insects in the neighborhood parks. It seems cruel today, but I would put them in a little cage and bring them back home as trophies. These creatures were fascinating, and curiosity was all I could master as a child. I wanted to catch them all, especially the elusive dragonflies. Now, my grandfather sadly passed away due to cancer when I was about four. I was too young to fully grasp what had happened, but I have flashes of my grandmother crying out during the cremation ceremony. It might have been my very first interaction with death. From that moment onward, my grandfather lived through stories told by my grandmother. One I remember the most is when she would open the sliding doors to get some air moving in the house. Every now and then, a dragonfly would get in. Sometimes to hang out a little, and other times just to say hi. My grandmother would always say, that's your grandfather checking up on you. And he will always be with you as long as you keep him alive. Her story bestowed a comforting notion that death wasn't in the end. And that in our mind and heart, memory of the past live on. Furthermore, through these symbolic encounters, insects became much more than cage trophies. I realized that even bugs deserve compassion. When I was nine, my mother and I had left Japan to move to Canada for a fresh start with my soon to become stepfather. The adaptation stretched through many years and required drastic adjustments for both of us. 
creative hobbies have been pushed aside for a long period of time, especially during the confusing and sometimes angry adulthood. I had deep-rooted issues that needed solving. So in my mid-20s, I embarked on a journey of self-discovery, which landed me back to Japan. During this trip, I find myself in Eniwashi, a beautiful rural community in the northern region, where I was hired to work in a local potato farm. My employer had me located in the vacant guest house right next to the field where I would eat, shower, and sleep. And believe me, there was not much else to do there besides that. This was before iPhones, and there was no computer, no internet. Not even a single book to read, but that came as no surprise since there were no bookshelves either. But without distractions, I was forced to reflect upon the inner shift that was soon to take place. This lifestyle would be unlike anything I had experienced before, which felt challenging, but at the same time, impelling. I swore to give it my all, no matter what. Working on a farm was exhausting. From sunup to sundown, we made sure that everything was in good health. We worked the soil and attended to the crops every day. The first few weeks were the most strenuous. But after a while, I got used to the beat and began to see changes, both in the body and the mind. On one particular day, I had an epiphany. I was in the middle of the field and took a deep breath of fresh air. Wipe the sweat off my forehead, then just stare at the vast horizon and watch the sunset in the distance. There, I felt a strong connection with the environment, like I was in tune with the surrounding elements. As calmness seemed in, I realized that I have found inner peace by reconnecting with Mother Nature and by living this simple yet hard-earned life. This experience created a strong connection between nature and I and also granted new perspective on all things in life. I can sincerely say that it was worthy of all the sweats and tears, effort and dedication. Back in Canada, on one gloomy day, I noticed in my backyard the rosebush getting rustled by the strong winds. Their delicate petals were being blown off to the ground, which seemed like such a waste, so I headed outside and gathered about the small basketful, including some leaves and stems. Initial idea was to create some sort of a flower arrangement. The first image that came to mind, a red beetle, which seemingly shared many similar aspects with roses. The roundness of the petals were like beetle shells, and the bright colors was a perfect match. Stems would be for recreating their legs and antennas, and finally the leaves would be the upper torso. Obviously, I was influenced by my affinity toward insects. The memory of my grandfather resurfaced. It took me right back to the time we spent hunting beetles together. Feeling nostalgic, I also wanted to include some Japanese aesthetics within this creation. Then I thought of traditional calligraphy. One of its fundamental is finding a balance between the positive and the negative space. So I found a nice sheet of white watercolor paper and placed parts of roses intentionally, one after the other like brush strokes. Slowly but surely, the red beetle materialized in the center of the contrasting backdrop. It was a simple exercise of using decaying materials to give them a second life. But the whole process was compelling and had definitely struck a chord. After all, this was the result of many meaningful experiences of my past. Within a few hours, the sculptures had perished completely. But that never bothered me. A few shots taken with my camera were more than enough to satisfy. I was just grateful to have noticed on that cloudy day the signs given my nature. It solidified my belief that this world is full of treasures for those who seek. Now, when I'm asked questions about my work, whether I feel sadness seeing my creations wither away, I will respond, not really. The experiences are forever preserved in my memories, which can be revisited at any time. And the reason why I dedicate so much time into making something that is temporary is because it's never a waste to give it your best shot. You never know what your effort could turn into. Will I ever use preserved flowers instead of fresh ones? And what about epoxy resin? My goal today isn't to dismiss other possibilities. Just like changing perspective, having an open mind is necessary. If there's one message that I would like to convey to you, 
it would be this. Be attentive to what Mother Nature is manifesting, and you will see that all things will eventually come to an end. So why not take the time now and what's left to relish the moment? Hold on to your memories tight and treasure them within your heart. Once this is accomplished, impermanence of things become inconsequential to your happiness. Thank you. Thank you.